Hi, everybody. This is Thomas Turingham. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for M&R Companies. And I'm going to be doing a tutorial today using the new version of CorelDRAW, CorelDRAW 2020. And this should give you a, some basic tips and just some kind of interesting ideas on how you can use the software a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is the latest version. I'm going to go ahead and open the software now. Um, one thing you can notice as soon as I open the software, they have a cool new interface. Um, they commissioned and worked with some of the um, more prominent artists in the industry. And so they've got some really nice artwork integrated into the software and tutorials from those artists are available as well. So I'm um, getting started with Corel. Um, the interface looks relatively the same. There are some important new um, additions to the software. We'll touch on some of them today in today's tutorial. The main thing is to just kind of we're going to go ahead and work up a design. This tutorial is kind of designed for people that are somewhat familiar with the software but uh, are looking to see some of the advantages versus maybe uh, competitive software um, such as Adobe Illustrator or something similar to that. One of the first things I do when I have a new um, page open I like to modify the um, nudge controls to put them at zero. Just a personal working preference. I don't like the nudges to offset, so I kind of do that right out of the gate. Um, I'm going to get a starting point here. So I'm going to go ahead and open a file that I've been working with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to this seminar folder. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pick um, this support file here. I'm going to double click that. And you'll notice here I've opened a graphic. Now this graphic is one that's um, readily available on a on a website called freepick.com. In this case, um, when I go into wireframe mode, I zoomed in a little bit, I'm gonna go Alt VW, and then you'll see that this is just a low resolution bitmap of this graphic. I do have permission to use this graphic because I basically downloaded it off the site, but I'm only using this as a reference, like a visual reference, because I wanna rapidly create this image for a t-shirt. So what I'm gonna do here um, as I'm going to zoom in and see how this is lower resolution. So I'm going to upsample this um, as if it was a reference that I've gotten from a customer. So I'm going to go to my bitmap and I'm going to go ahead and hit the resample button. That brings up the resample dialog. I'm going to go ahead and resample this to say 200 or something and it'll help average the amount of pixels I have available. And you'll see how it kind of smooths it out a little bit. Um, I'm not going to attempt to trace it. This is actually one of the advantages of this software is it has a has a higher level of uh, power trace. It's a lot more subtle and has some different advantages. In this case, I'm going to rebuild this thing um, from scratch. I'm going to try to do it relatively quickly. In this case, I'm, instead of using the wide variety of drawing tools, I'm going to just stick with my standard here, which is just like the freehand tool. And I'm just going to double click, double click, and double click. And I'm going to make like one kind of feather here. And I'll double click it on the shape tool and hit the curves menu. So I've just converted all these pieces to curves. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just kind of arc it slightly so I can grab these because now they're all curves. And then I can click here and then click here near the edge and I can get rid of the one in the middle. And you see how that kind of creates a curve there. And I can kind of drag it in a little bit to give it a little bit of a longer feather effect, so to speak. I'm going to bring this up just a hair and bring this one down just a hair. So now I've created the kind of this long feather here. And you see how that kind of angles out slightly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this down. And I'm going to get in the same line. I'm going to right click. And then I'm just going to angle this a little bit this way. And see how it shortens just a tiny bit. And kind of crosses over the other one. So that way I can kind of make an additional feather here that just kind of merges with this one. I'm going to go back that up a couple steps. And then I'll go forward a couple steps just to see if, if that's kind of where I want. And you can see I kind of wanted this arc. So I can even use a reference line if I want to. If I click here, and then I click here, and then I click the pick tool, I can control Q, and then I'll go back to the shape tool. And if I double click both nodes, I can convert it to a, a curve, and then I can kind of bend it here so it arcs. So I can kind of follow this this guideline here as an arc line for what I'm doing here. And I can marry all these up to that line right there. And then I can drag another one down just about that same distance. You can sort of see the same distance here. One, two, three. And then I can take this one and just kind of slant it over in there. 
Um, and then if I hit the D key, you see how it's getting a little bit wider though? So what I may want to do is squish it just a little bit so it doesn't get too wide. Like that, like this. That way, as we go, it doesn't make the feathers too wide. And I can connect here. Another thing you can do is slightly rotate them if, if, if skewing them is, is distorting them too much. So I slightly rotated at that time before I skewed it. So and then I'm going to skew it over. Um, and we're just kind of rapidly trying to make this so that I work it a couple more times. Just get this kind of in the right spot. Probably two more. And we should be pretty much on track here. I'm just going to click it again. So you click it once and then click it again. And you get your, your way to arc it here. I'm also looking at this slice, like if this should follow the same line here, where these kind of cross over. Um, that'll give you the most realistic. And I don't worry if it like extends past where I want it to go. Because uh, for the purposes of this, I just want it to be meeting that edge. Now I could, like I said, kind of squish this a little bit more, but I think I'm pretty good there. And now what I can do now, looking at this, I keep this kind of same arc, bring that line up, I'll right click, just so I can kind of see where my um, outline is right here and here, and make sure these these crossovers, it's not too bad. I can And I can adjust those if I want to by kind of clicking on the, different individual pieces and I'm only going to do this once so you know we kind of look at it there and look at that and then look at this and then look at this one and may make this one just a little bit farther down like that there and then click here bring it down a little bit and then now I've got my basic feathers started for this and what I can do is I can get rid of this, delete it, and I can use all of these feathers together in a group. You notice I missed this on purpose, this line, because I don't really want that as part of the group. And then I can take these and I can right click them to duplicate them and I can drag them down in size and have those be like the second level of feathers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of rotate them a little bit here since they're smaller, you can kind of use it like this and then kind of overlap these. Um, now I don't want them to be, in this case I might want to skew them down because I want them to be, you know, on this level here and you can also crush them a little bit sideways just so that they're all on the um, on the second level of feathers kind of, because that arc is going to be like right here. Okay, and then the last piece of this would be just looking at this would be um, to have one last line that would compose the wing. So that would be basically right here. And I can just double click relatively quickly here. And then hold the control key to make it straight. And then I'm kind of going, I'll go up here and here. And then I'll double click here, curve, and then we go ahead and make it this way that way and then arc this one here and if we're worried these are too like there's too much of a bump there just double click your nodes and delete the ones in between same thing here and I'm not worried about these lines right here for right now because what I want to do now I'm going to save the file control shift s I'm going to go ahead and save it as let's just do support one and then this file actually we're going to have one piece that's going to be this and then it's going to fall behind with even smaller feathers so you'll have this kind of here this file will kind of like go into this one but then it will have kind of a one feather basically like right here and then the rest will be smaller ones that I'll make by using one merged version of these that's even smaller. So I'll kind of take this and do that. And then I'll take these and I'll ungroup them real quick. Ungroup. And then I'll hit weld. 
and you can kind of see that welded them all together. And then I'm going to rotate them just a little bit so I can squish them. Um, I rotate them perpendicular just so when I squish them it doesn't distort them quite as much. And then I'll shift it over here. And then these can be the last row, which will be, let me click and then click again here and rotate. And then so these will be like basically like right there. And I'll go ahead and weld this to this. Weld those together. Let's see what that looks like. I'm just going to move it away to see. It's not bad. Let me go back. And then I undid it, so Control Z twice. And then I'm just going to take it and go one more time. And I'll go, like, we need about just a handful more feathers on this. So somewhere right about here. We still need some coming across, so right about there. Let's zoom in and figure this out. So we've got one layer overlapping here that I was going to weld together with this. So basically, this layer, we're going to weld to this. Go ahead and weld those. And then we've got this layer, which I can get rid of here. And then we've got this layer, which essentially I want to have work with this piece right there. So if we've got it, we can just bring it down and kind of go from here over to the end there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this part here I know this is difficult to see here but uh, it's actually fairly easy to just kind of you want to just go in here and you're going to trim out this piece that's going to hang over. So you just kind of want to get rid of this extra piece here. I'm going to just trim it off. And then I should be able to kind of combine these other two. And even if they don't work out perfectly, like this piece that's remaining, and I merge that with this piece right here. Um, go ahead and weld it. This piece on top, you're going to kind of see, so there's a couple stragglers here that I can I can always get rid of. Oh, there, this was hanging above. So see that when, when I added that, it modified this, so I don't want to do that. So what I need to do there is I need to get rid of these nodes above here. So it's useful to use your undo key um, a lot of times, like very liberally when you use this kind of stuff. And then these have points that are above where this cutout is going to be. So I can drag those down and drag these down a little bit just so they're not too weird. Um, just tweak them just a little bit and then I can once this is below that then I can merge this and it won't cause me a problem with my final piece here I merge it weld it together and then we can take a look at the other one and now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to wireframe let's go ahead and see and we're, again, we're just using that clip art as a reference, but it's helpful because, okay, and then you can take these and you can start to fill them with um, just a flat fill. And you can kind of see how this is shaping. And then, okay, so there's a couple of pieces that need a little bit of work there, but you get the idea where it's like, okay, this is kind of working. Um, and I need to cut out some of this, so. I'm going to go ahead and echo some of these other pieces just real quick. Um, and I can just make a rectangle here. Goes underneath and I'll round it just a hair. You hit the shape tool, you round it a tiny bit. And then I'll make another one that kind of combines here. That goes all the way down. 
goes down to there. And again, we'll round them just a little bit, so that's about right. Zoom out again, zoom back in. And whenever you do something like this, you can kind of go click here and then click there and then hit the center key to center everything. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this. I'm going to kind of widen it to the widest point, recenter them. So it's centered. I'm going to go ahead and combine this with that. So I'll weld it. And then here, what I can do, I'm going to use the middle mouse key to pan down. And I can kind of just get rid of these middle nodes here, delete them. And then I can kind of nudge this over. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then I'll nudge this one over. One, two, three, four. And then you, you can see how it kind of angles the whole thing like this already is. We'll keep that a straight line. So that's useful. And I've got a little bit of a weird thing here with this wing. So I'm going to kind of see where that is. I'm not sure if it might be this one. I'll have to see which. Let me go to wireframe mode here. Something's sticking out there. Let's see. I think that's whatever piece this is. Go ahead and bring that inside of where everything's trimmed. That way I don't have anything sticking out here. Let's go ahead and go back to enhanced mode. Yeah, there we go. And then I can get rid of my guideline here. I can delete that. And then I can fill these with white, so at least we're, we know what we're looking at here. So it looks a little bit more obviously this is going to go up. Shift page up. And if I wanted to cut that out, you know, maybe I nudge it up once and then go control, oops, delete. So somehow this got reset. I'm not sure. Some software will occasionally do that. It'll reset the duplicates and clones. I'm not sure why that happened on this because I already reset it for this page. I'm going to hit enter and save. So that's what I don't like. And that's because I use this uh, control D key. So I hit control D, then I hold the shift key, expand it out just a little bit. And then I can click this and use that as a trim. And then I can get rid of that bigger square and then you can see how that kind of cut that out. And I can even move that up just slightly. And then you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. But that in our final is going to give that a little bit of space and dimension. Now, obviously I got to do these snake things. So we're going to go ahead and make a shape for that. Probably start with an oval shape there. Um, we can hit control Q to convert it to a curve. And then I'm probably just going to copy pretty much what they have here um, but just use the nodes to kind of I'll stretch this node out slightly and I'll stretch that node out slightly and then what I'll probably do is just take a, a cut line here and just trim that out right here so I'll just trim that I've got this delete and then I'll do a slight oval here That'll be my eye, more or less. And then I'm going to save it. Control S. And then I need to do the snake body. You can see how that kind of matches up, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make part of this go over and then under. And so what I can do is I can just zoom in here, and then relatively quickly I'm going to go ahead and go to wireframe mode, Alt V W, and then I'm going to make a cutout to this. And what the re, the way I can do that is I can just essentially make. And when I click on it, I'm here I'll ungroup it, and then I'll ungroup the other one, and then here I'm just going to make a very quick contour shape, effect contour, pulls up the contour menu. I'm going to go about like a, maybe like a three or a four size to it. Oh, I need to go outer. I did inner. This is probably going to be a little bit too big. So I'm going to go two, let's see where that's at, two, maybe one and a half. So let's go one five there. And then I'm going to go ahead and break that apart. And then I'll do the same thing here. Same one, one and a half, and then I'll go Control K. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate. So you have to just decide which ones you want to be on top. So in this case, I want the snake to be on top 
um, this snake right here to be on top. So that means that I'm going to use this to cut this snake right here. I'm going to trim that. And then as I go down, I want this snake not to be on top this time. I want it to be on bottom. So I need to kind of cut these out. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to kind of figure out, well, what I want is I want these to be cut between these shapes. So I'm going to kind of make some lines here. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to trim that. And then I'll take this and go here and trim that. Same thing here. Trim that. And then trim this one. Working my way down. And then I think I have one more here that I want to trim. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, bring it down here. Trim it there. And then, and so what I'm basically doing is I'm making a convenient way to break this apart quickly. So I can take this shape. I can delete these two now. They were just done for just the purposes of this. And then I can take, of cutting this out. And so then I can take these shapes and I can control K and then take these shapes and control K. And now they're all separate elements. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now these can be, if I if I delete one portion, it won't delete the whole snake, which is what the problem was before. So if I want this snake to be on top, then I need to take that outline and cut it out of this snake. But it won't do all of them, see? So, so in that case, I'm going to take this outline. I'm going to cut just this part of the snake. I'm going to say trim. And then just for reference, I can get rid of it. And then I can go down. And I can say, well, I want... So see, now that one isn't affected down here. And so what I can do is I can take... Now, I want the opposite now. I want this snake to stay on top. So I want this to actually cut this part of the snake right there. So I can trim that. And then you can delete these. Those were all just made quick cuts to make this shape. And then essentially you have your snake, except this time it's weaving in and out. Let me go ahead and look at it here. That's weaving in and out of each other here, appropriately above and beyond um, the shape there. And then the last piece of this would be to take this shape right here and just hold the control key duplicate it, right click, and then you can nudge it over roughly in the same spot. And then you should be able to take both of these and deselect that part and kind of group them. Control G and then click the middle and then hit center. You probably didn't see it move here, but just as a reference point. And let me go ahead and look at here. It looks like I got a duplicate eyeball here. So we can kind of get rid of that extra one. Go ahead and save your file, Control S. I'm going to zoom out. Now I'm going to add some effect to this. I don't need the underlying clip art anymore, which is just for reference. So I'm going to save this, save my file. I want to make, go ahead and make a graphic out of this. So relatively quickly, I'm going to make a double, make an outline here. I'm going to hold the hold the shift key so I can strain it to, to a circle in the same shape, essentially. I'll right click and I'm going to take another shape here. Control D, bring it in a little bit tighter here, right about there. And then I'm going to make one more of these. So I'm just going to, again, hold the shift key out, bring it out to about the same distance, right click. And then looking at this, I'm going to, let me go ahead and go in here, zoom in a little bit. For some reason, it looks like I have an extra outline here. I did. So I deleted that one. Um, Control Shift or Control S saves it. And then we can center everything that's grouped here by selecting everything, grouping it. Click on your circle, hit CE, centers it in both positions. Visually, this might be a little top heavy. So you, what you may want to do is you may want to bump it down anyway. So I'm going to click, I'm going to hold the shift key, enlarge it a little bit, and then go ahead and nudge it down, holding the shift key to do a power nudge 
just so visually it looks like it's centered in between both. Um, another thing to do would be to take another element here, um, a common like nursing element is that kind of um, star, that square star that they have, which I believe is a straight bar like this. And then you can take this same shape. Let me click it again here. I'm just going to go to four, like a 45 degrees there. And I'm going to hit the D key. And then I'll rotate it two more. And I think it's like this. Let me see. But I think we need to rotate it one more click here up. And maybe here one more click up there. And I think you can take this whole thing and merge it. And I think that gives you the medical star here. And then we can kind of see E again, center it in the circle, reduce the size a little bit. So it's there. And then we can always position this in there if we need to. Um, the one thing we can do is we can take this, let me shrink it just a little bit and put an outline around the outside. Um, let's go outside to this. Again, we'll go up a little bit. Go up a little bit more. There we go. And then hit Control K. And then this element, if we wanted to, we can see if we can fit it in there. So they have to be quite a bit smaller to fit in there, but um, somewhere around there. Maybe we leave it bigger for now and just see if it extends out, if it's not too awkward being extended out there and then leave it there and then hit control S to save and then now we're going to put some type in there and then we add effects to the design so the type we can put here um, put all caps on and then this could be like a name drop Here, hit Control K, split it apart, and bring this down here, and then bring this up here. Um, one element we could add to this would be, you know, you could do a personalization element, but let's get the right font first. So let me go ahead and click on this. Um, we want probably a sans serif font. You know, Bank Gothic isn't isn't necessarily a bad choice, so we could use that. Use that for both, and then we'll enlarge them. I think I'll enlarge them both at the same time, just to. Whoops. Let's see if I can get them up here. At the same time, just to get the sizing close. Let's try this. And then, of course, we can text fit text to path. And then we're going to use this path. You see, it, the red line shows you when it's centered. Then we can go off center just a little bit. And if you can't get it to center from top to bottom here, what you can do is zoom in a little bit because then it'll support the actual shift of it a little bit cleaner. And you can just kind of eyeball it if you didn't. You could create it, a line in there to get the exact center if you wanted, um, just to make sure you're on the exact center. But I'm just kind of eyeballing it there. And then we can take this font and do the same thing on the bottom text, fit text to path. And then basically go down to the bottom here. And in this one, you want to flip it. So you mirror it and then mirror it up one. And then basically put, you can check that line with being on the same line roughly as the one on the top. But I'm going to zoom down here just so when I'm close again, I can kind of eyeball it and make it centered. And then usually when you do a inverted arch like this, you need to expand your type a little bit more than on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and spread that out. And then the same thing on the top, I'll spread that out a little bit. Bump them both. Let's just look at it here and zoom out. That's not bad. And then what we can do here is we can also add, you know, little symbols in the, in the end here. Um, and then put the fills in and kind of wrap this design up. So um, we can add little elements in here. Just a simple five-pointed star here. And then if you click here, you can kind of center it sideways. And then I'll do two. And then what you can do is you can drag these over right click and then hold the control key and flip them so they're in the exact same spot and 
and then ready to put fills in for this design. Now to keep things relatively simple, I'll hit Control S, save it. Um, we're going to make kind of a metallic look to all this stuff. I'm going to do that relatively quickly or as fast as I can, and then um, we can just see how that turns out. I have a style saved that I'm going to use and just see how this basically lays out on the garment. Um, so what we want is we want two different elements saved. So we want this element, I'm going to hit duplicate and then I'm going to combine it with the outside. So I control L and then I shift page down so that this this piece is an extra one. And then this one I do the same thing. So this one I'm going to hit control K to break it apart so I can do it without having to worry about the fix to path. So this one I hit control D, duplicate that and then connect it to that one. Then control L shape. And if I'm wondering if I got the right one, I can always hit nudge up and down and then shift page down. And then I should be able to take this shape. It looks a little bit out of position, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move it up just a nudge. I don't know if that's a technical term or not. Probably not. Just a hair, whatever you want to call it, and then click here and then control L. So now I've got two distinct shapes here that I can fill with a gray so that I can kind of see where that's at. If that doesn't work, then I know I didn't do something right. So let's see. If I fill that with gray, yeah, so that's correct. So control Z, fill that with gray. So that's correct. Now this one, okay, so then I need this one. Yep, I just didn't combine those two. Okay, control L combined and then I fill that with gray. Whoops, still didn't work. I wonder why. This, for some reason, didn't combine with this. That one, hold the shift key and then control L. And it still says, oh, three objects. So I'm not sure why. Text on a path. Oh, control K. That's why. So I got to zoom out here and make sure I didn't mess up. Oh, okay. That must have been the local nurse guideline. That's why. So here, now it's an ellipse, so now I should be able to combine it. So it was using it as a path in the bottom, which is why it wasn't allowing me to just do that quick modification there. And now, yeah, there we go. And then that gives me a rough idea of that. And then this, we'll just hit Control D, duplicate, hold the Shift key, click this outside edge right here, and then Control L, and then combine that to give you a kind of a gray tone, Shift page down, and then this, which I would just fill with a little bit of a lighter gray, but and then shift page down and give you kind of a look to that. There you go. And then I'll hit save. And then I might add actually another additional star here just for just for grins. Give them three three stars here instead of two. So slide that over, slide this over, slide that over. Just kind of center it and then I'll add one. Whoops. Just add one here. Slide it over here and right click. And then hit save. And these can be kind of silver as well, right there. Save this. And then we're gonna fill all this now with a with a kind of a fill that should make it look metallic pretty quick. So I'm gonna import that. Let me see what I have on page two. I'm going to accidentally made a page here. Let me just look real quick. It doesn't appear to be anything, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that page. Um, let me import the file. From here, let's look Chrome. This has got a pattern fill on it that I like and I'm going to kind of use for this. So it should be able to rapidly, hopefully, um, create kind of a Chrome look to a lot of these pieces. Now, one thing I'm going to do I'm going to ungroup this, and then I'm going to kind of ungroup these. And then if this works, what I want to do is I want to kind of get rid of, I'm going to get this wing, let me click that eyeball off, and hit delete. And then I'm going to apply this, whoops, control Z, it saves me again. What I'm going to do is kind of apply this to these shapes. So what I want to do here is I'm going to do a very small kind of, inside contour here. Let's see. Um, let's see how that works. This will be black. It's not bad. Let me go a little bit bigger. Maybe that'll be too that might be too much. 
Yeah, it'll be too much. Let me go 1.7 there. And then oh, Control K. And then these. I'm just going to go ahead and combine them all just for speed. Control L. And then I'll hit Apply. And then I'll hit Control K. And then I'll hit Save because when you're doing a lot of contours, sometimes it locks the program up. Although this version seems remarkably stable, which is wonderful news for all of you Corel Draw users out there. And then Control L, and again I'll hit Apply, and then hit Control K. And then so what I've done here is I've essentially made two separate elements that I can dump this fill into. And I'm going to hit Control K to all those fills. And the same thing here, Control K. But I might wait actually and just leave them combined for now because I'm going to drag this fill. I'm going to drop it there. I'm going to say copy fill here. So it copies the fill all the way there. And then I hit copy fill here. And then I'm just using that as a kind of a drag and drop sort of thing. Now I got that copy fill there. 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 And then I'm going to control K. I'm going to control L and then control K. Control K. Shift page down. So I dropped them all the way down. And then I'm going to do the outer one. So I can click this and just ungroup it a couple of times and just for ease of whoops just for ease of use I'll go ahead and move that top out of the way and then I'm going to drag this and drop that there and I'm going to do that fill there do that fill here and then do that fill here we fill there and then the same sort of thing click 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 I can control L and then I can control K and then it breaks it all up into a bunch of different fills and then what I can do is I can take all those right here, control Z, control Z, break them all up, see? So you combine them all, they're combined, and then control L and control K, you break them all apart there. Now, what you can do with this, since they broke them apart, it kind of bumps the whole fill a little bit wonky, but you can fix that pretty relatively quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that first before I bump it down into um, and push the other fill above it. So I'm going to hit group and then I'm going to go ahead and hit this interactive fill tool. And you see how kind of crazy all those fills are? That gives you an idea of what the angle is on all these. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to do one of them. I'm going to click this one and I'm going to change this fill on this one so I'm going to hit cancel and then I'm going to take this fill and I'm going to go here and what I really want is I want um, let me move out so I can kind of get this angle right I want this the angle of the fill to kind of go with the line of the way the feathers are on this image so I want the angle to be roughly the same let me move this up a little bit roughly something like this now once you have it we can test and see if this works so I'm going to grab this right click drop it I'm going to say copy fill outline to group and it see how it changes it to all of them so that's a really good useful step so it kind of makes them all work a little bit consecutive with that one and then I can leave them grouped and I'm going to go shift page down and then I can select everything in that group again probably have to deselect the eyeball here again and I'll shift page up and now you can see how it's kind of left these pieces here so I'm going to go ahead and take these these this curve is like all the way up so shift page up right and then this one so this curve right here let's look at it yep so this one and then the, these So take this curve and go up to the top, shift page up. And then you want your next one in line. So let's take these. And I'm going to go shift page down. And then I'll select these. And I'll go shift page up. And so now they're in the right order. So I drop the other ones down, move these ones up, and then I drop these down. And so these are all in the right order. But now what I want to do is I'm going to group them all. 
Control G, and then I do the same thing I did before with the other ones. I'm looking at this fill underneath because I just want to select the one. This is a good way to do fill when you're doing a bunch of different fills this way. You can kind of select the one and then edit it so that it works with the other fill. And remember the angle that you did before was kind of like this. And what you want is you want the dark areas of this fill to hit the light areas of the other one. That's what gives it that kind of chrome shimmer effect, if you will. So you want the dark areas of this to be hitting where the other one gets light. And that's what gives you that that whole like kind of chrome glimmer, if you will. I'm going to right click, drag it over, and then I say copy fill outline to group. It does the same thing to all the rest of them. And now I have to stagger this because um, I have to ungroup both sets and then gang them together and then I can ungroup them. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hit Control K, and then Control U, ungroups them. And then I'm going to grab this top bottom bar and see how that's grouped. I'm going to ungroup that. So I'm going to grab the bottom one and this one. And I'm going to shift page up. And then I can get rid of all the outlines. So you can see how that kind of makes the whole thing become more of a chrome. And then I'll group it. And then just to get it out of the way, I'll shift page down. And then I'll do the next set, which are all these. And so these I can kind of grab like this, as long as I don't hit the other shapes. And I can shift page up. Well, actually I'll deselect this. Shift page up. So that'll be just these feathers, so to speak. Um, looks like I accidentally maybe got this one. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Let me undo a couple times. Let's try again. One more time. Let's see if I can. Oh, yeah, see, I accidentally grab that one. So I click off that one. Then I've got all these. So shift page up. And that's okay. I got the bottom again, but that's okay. And then, so I've got all of these here. And then basically, so I can grab all those essentially right here. And I can make sure I deselect the one underneath. And then these can basically be like that. And then group, right? And then shift page down to those. And then this last set, I can manually select them all. If I want, just click them all. And then click these edges here. Another way would be to go into wireframe mode or non-wireframe and grab them all, but we just go ahead and grab them this way. Grab them, and then I'll have to deselect this and possibly, you know, here, let me shift page up. Nope, I think I'm good. So group, and then turn all those off, and then shift page down, and then I should be able to, Alt V W grab all of these and shift page up control, and then go back and there that shows all the fills in there which is kind of crazy but that gives you an idea on how to kind of make a quick kind of chrome wing now to make this realistic one thing you can do now that these are grouped so each set of two shapes is grouped one thing I don't like is kind of this knife one and you can always correct them as you go a little bit because we've got them saved the way they are um, I can tweak the nodes relatively quickly here and just kind of flatten these shapes out if I wanted to all be flat and that's a pretty simple thing to do to make them all look uniform so they all look like the same so it's not hard to do to just make them at least a little bit look similar just so you have a more uniform granted this isn't supposed to be really realistic but um, you can make an extra note if you need to there and then so you get the idea there and then this if I wanted to could be down a little bit more um, just to give you a little bit more coverage in there and this dark shape here is a little bit dramatic so I'm going to pull that up to here maybe I'll just have it right there that's good and then so what are we going to do here? Well, this I can actually save. 
the way it is. Now if I don't like all the darkness here, I can change my, like I said, I can change my, uh, if I want more, like say, chrome lightness to this, it's relatively easy to change where that falls, right? It's basically, you can just look at it in real time almost, like where does that shadow kind of fall? If it's too dark and I don't like it, then I can toss it out, but I think that's that looks about right there. And then what I do want to do though is that these are a group, right? So there's a group of two here. So what I do want to do is, is I'm going to save this, but I'm going to create a shadow here now. So I'm going to click um, drop shadow and I'm just going to drag just a little bit and I'm going to drop this shadow and then what I want is I want this shadow to kind of go this way a tiny bit and you'll see how it, when it starts to shift I'm going to just drag it and drop it there and I'm going to darken it a little bit more, so we go to like 75-ish. I'll say enter. And then I'm going to take the next group here. Um, you may have to go to wireframe to get it, but I'm going to take, so let me click here, take the next group here, and I'm going to hit object um, effects. Let's see where it is. In this version, you got copy effect shadow from and then you click on the shadow and then it creates another one and then you could pick this group and then you could hit object copy effect shadow from and then you click this group and so what you end up with is this so you got a wing with shadows on both sides behind that element right and then in this case so you can see it kind of starts to create a kind of a chrome wing there. And I can use the same kind of chrome look to augment the rest of this image here. So you got you can take these elements that I have, hold the shift key, shift page up, okay, to kind of create, let me grab these and make them above my drop shadows. There we go, right here. Grab that, shift page up. Let me zoom back here. And then these elements to this, like you probably would want, um, control D, bring this in a little bit. And then this sort of thing, you're gonna want like a chrome, you know, fill. So I can double click this and just kind of rapidly make one. Um, click your click your fountain fill um, here. And we're gonna want, in this case, you'll probably want, my guess would be you'd want elliptical and you're going to want you know you can click here and then you can click to use the same colors in your other fill like you can grab this color and kind of go to that relatively quickly and so you go in the middle I'll just go ahead and say um, let me do it one more time so you kind of grab this and then go uh, let's click fountain fill round, click this, and then you can grab that color from here or from somewhere else, and then you can kind of move the center point up so it looks a little more rounded like that, and then um, go ahead and say OK, save it, and then I can right click, take off the, and then for the outline what you can do, you can kind of just hit the fill and then reverse it. So you can just kind of drag this over and say copy fill here and you won't see a big change there but what you do is you click it double click and then when you come back to here what you can do is you can basically just flip the fill around so you can go double click here drag this over to here click this click this one and then when you click here you can kind of get the shadow going there and then this one can be basically just white again and then say okay and that way you can kind of get this whole uh, same sort of like what would you say shadowing effect going on here I can group those two and then as far as this this piece goes, we can use that same sort of uh, chrome fill that we have over here with it. 
So I can just center this again so you can see what that looks like here. So I'll click this, that, D, and then I can grab this and I can drag it over here and drop it. Say copy fill here. Kind of see how it staggers down through it. I can right click. And then you can take a inside contour to it. Pretty small, small one. And then control K. And then take your outside contour and go that to the original. And if you know if that doesn't look right, then you can just flip them, flip them back and forth. So if it looked better the other way, then take this. Another thing that can work as well is if you want for um, Chrome is to just offset the existing fill. If the combination of fills don't work that well, you just move them up and move them down selectively. These look a little bit maybe too skinny, but it's not bad for what we're doing. That's not bad. Okay, hit Control S, save it, click. This probably needs a, an outline of some kind. Let's go up to 50 on that. Um, just click this. Just grab like a 50% outline. Like this. Say OK. And then we have these guys left to do. And then these, of course, you can have the same sort of thing with the shadowing. You know, if you wanted to drop a drop shadow on those, um, you could easily do it. So this one would have a drop shadow on top of those, that sort of thing. So relatively easy to do. I'm just going to grab them all, control group, control G, groups, and then object, copy, shadow, and then drop that in. That drops a shadow in there, and then same thing from here object. Oops, what did I do there? There, object, copy, shadow from, we can just grab from there. And then that one I'm going to make sure it's not off center, just so it's more of a drop. Shadow is actually on the object. And you, if it has a real simple object, one of the things you can do is you can uh, expand the shadow a little bit so it spreads out. elevate these pieces just a little bit off of it and then I can take my wing here and I can take that oops I grabbed the star by accident let me just go ahead and grab that wing not the star grab it and right click now what I do want when I grab it is I want all the shadows too so I want to make sure I get all those Group it, then control D, and then you flip it, and then move all that over. And you can go behind, you can tuck those behind if you want, you know, depending, just so it looks like it's more part of the whole thing. And then when we have that tucked in, you can save it, control S saves it, and then you can also use this chrome piece. Whoops zoomed in a little bit too much. You can use this chrome on the other pieces of basically chrome that are on this thing. Get it, control K. Break that apart. So we're basically looking at 
almost being done with this. We got kind of a graphic going here, and then you want like this shape inside of this. Shift page down. We're going to do like a blue fill here. I'm probably going to do like a gradient in there. Which would be like click this. We'll probably do a radiant fill. And then I can click here. And then what I'll do here is I'll kind of make it much more of a cyan kind of look and fill. Let's say OK there. Say OK. And then I want to do like an inside shadow here. Um, Corraldo does a pretty good job at that. So we have this effect here. We can cl click this effect right here. Um, you can affect object. Um, and we can go down here, click. Um, you can do shadow. And then here you can click shadow. Whoops. Let me get this right shadow but then what I want to do here now is um, let's see what presets they have let's do inner glow and then the glow will be black we can do multiply and we can do let's make it kind of short it's pretty close to the edges and then we go middle, um, outside, and then let's do like shadow opacity. We need maybe 75. So this we need shadow feather in one. Four. And then this will be um, outside and middle there. And then maybe I'll go a lot less, like 25, just to give us a little bit of a set off from that, the rest of it. Save it. And then this piece here. We've got all these objects that we can finish up with. I'm going to just hit Control L, combine them all in one piece. I'll hit Save, and then coming down here, we can pretty rapidly duplicate them all with an inside contour. And I'll hit Control K. And then this, you'll see, these are all the same shapes. So then we can combine that. We can add this to all those. So copy fill to all of them and then we can copy the outside fill to all these copy fill to all those and then what we do is we take all these and we hit control K and then it puts it to all of them and we hit all these and we hit control K it puts it to all them and so what we end up with is all these where we can take all the outlines off and they all look chrome page up we group them and the same thing with the other side up, group them, no outline, there, saved, and then might as well do the type as well, finish that, and then we can leave that along with this background. Now I want to have a background around the outside of this image, and then we're pretty much wrapped with this. I'm going to hit Control S, save it, come back. I want to do this. You can see there's a little thin border here, so I want to click this edge. There's probably no fill on it. Yeah, let me zoom out just a little bit. So we have this edge right here. And you'll see it when I get it. So it says ellipse down here, and then hold the shift key, click that, and the two object control L. So I got a curve. Now I know if I'll get it right if I hit red, and it just fills that. Okay, good. So that's kind of where we're at here. Um, I don't want to do red in this case, but I could do. Um, there's a bunch of different colors I could use. I mean, the orange is actually kind of nice, kind of offsets it, but I think I'll go um, a little bit more of a, like a cyan to 
could do this or you could pick um, a complement color to to the blue inside which would be kind of a brown but I might go what I might go with is kind of a natural off-white that goes to a brown and so as you can do here um, let me save the image or save the design and then what we can do here is we can take this and we can fill it with um, brown but then I can create a inside contour right here um, and pretty low but we'll do a lot of steps we'll do like you know 30 steps or something and then we'll go um, basically to that fill we'll pick this fill here the kind of off-white fill and now you don't even really see it here because the, the um, I want the lines to be smaller but we need like about 40 steps or so we'll hit that and then we don't need any outlines so we'll just hit that and you see that shift page down save it we have these we'll just group all these together group and then we'll just copy um, the drop shadow from here so they all have the drop shadow on it and then we need to just update our font I can get rid of this chrome because I'm done with the chrome at least for now if I need it I have it on the other shapes in there I can hit save to it um, and then right here um, what we can do is we can do a background just to show what this will look like because we want to do it on a black shirt probably so I'll do hit the P key centered in the page I'll hit uh, let me group all my elements group and then hold the shift key and then hit the P key again center them in the page we click this shift page down let's look like see what it looks like on black so there it is on a black shirt and then the question is do I want to one thing I can do is I can create a little bit of an outline here on these if I want to define their edges a little more um, that's that's really subjective but it might be nice because it look a little bit fuzzy here so you could create a couple outlines on here just to kind of clean it up a little bit um, and it might be nice like I said here if we got these I'm going to ungroup them and then click here I'm going to just hit control Q um, you could leave them as fonts if you wanted to edit this and leave it as a you know um, maybe I'll just do that just so that they're easy to easy to uh, if you wanted to sub in a different type font or something you could leave them as fonts you could even leave them on the path just to find them a little better um, but I do want an effect on them a little bit so I'm gonna go with an outside outline let's go with uh, let's go with black here just real quick let's wrap this design up so we go black outline about two point um, behind fill say okay we can take the same fill from here probably now I may not be able to grab it because it's got a shadow on it so I have to see yeah these it's detecting all of these now this is see it's got a drop shadow on it so what I may need to do is let's see here here we go so I got that so I can just drag it up and drop it here let's say copy fill here Nope, didn't work here let me try it again copy fill nope for some reason didn't work let me try it with a something simpler so you should be able to right click drag this and if it says drop copy fill but it might not be doing it because this is a drop shadow on here so what I might need to do a lot of times I'll do this I'll drag this over and then I'll right click and then what you can do is you can uh, then it just gives me the curve and then you can copy fill and it'll do it so then I can copy the fill here like that let me hit delete hit delete and then this one drag it down and copy fill here and then you can always drag it down and copy outline um, 
and then you could do a little bit of a um, control D control shift page down just nudge it like twice fill it with black same thing with this just kind of delete control D shift page down fill it with black and nudge it shift page down and then nudge it up twice and then you can always click your other one in case it makes it look off-center and nudge it there and there and then nudge it either down or up just to make it make sure it looks centered in your image and then I would probably put just to define it better I'd probably put an edge just a little bit of a outline to here whoops yeah see this has a contour on it so it's gonna wanna here I'll control K so it's got a contour right there see so this here control K break it apart and the, what we really want here is we want to put an inside contour just in a little outline to separate it so I hold the control key flip it over um, then you can see the very outline here the very last one is the one where you'd want to add a little outline here let's do it there of like four something like that maybe maybe three scale okay hold the control key flip it over this hold the control key flip it over there we go that gives you a little bit more of a kind of an interesting look to it and then I just add a little bit of an outline to the stars and we're all done so I kind of bring this in easy enough to do just kind of click on these now you may need to that's a lens here so you may need to click these if there are groups then just ungroup them and then this these see if you can move them ungroup them again three double click them and just add like probably again black and just you know two point or something behind the fill is probably good scale with image say okay if it looks too harsh or it looks like too much you could always lo lower them in size so you can always go down to one probably and say okay and for some reason this one's standing way up on top of the other one so if uh, we could always fix that as well if it looks like it looks like it's sticking out more on one side than it is on the other um, that's one we can always tweak you can see this outline looks a little bit uneven so I probably had a little bit of a we can just check it real quick I probably had a little bit of a off-centered maybe I didn't get the outside edge when I flipped it okay so the contour is there so I'll just go ahead and see if I can center it yep center center looks good and so hopefully this this went a little long but you can you can get the idea of how to construct something with a bunch of different types of fills in Corel draw um, hopefully this is educational kind of gives you a final um, and we could go into separating this on a further tutorial. So hopefully this makes sense. And if you have any questions, make sure to um, fill out a comment below. And um, we can make sure to kind of bring you more informative tutorials just like this one. Thanks very much.